Okay, so this is a fairly simple problem working with a compressor. It's going to take air in and release compressed air. So we have the pressure, temperature, and the volumetric flow rate at the inlet. And then we have the pressure and temperature at the exit. And then we're told that the heat transfer occurs at a rate of 2 kilowatts from the compressor to the surrounding. So it's going to exit the compressor at 2 kilowatts. That's the rate. And then we're told that this air can behave as an ideal gas. So in other words, PV equals MRT. And this is on a rate basis. So you have the volumetric flow rate and the mass flow rate, since we're given a volumetric flow rate. And then we need to find the input power to this compressor, so W in. Um, we're also told that kinetic and potential energy are zero, so they're negligible. And we need to find the input power, W dot. So we'll start with the energy balance equation over this compressor. So you have zero equals Q, heat transfer, minus W, the power, plus the mass flow rate times what comes in minus what comes out, and this is difference in enthalpy. You're not gonna use the kinetic or potential energy because we're told that they're negligible. So this right here is your whole energy balance equation over this compressor. Now, obviously we're looking for the power here, so I'm gonna rearrange it and we're gonna solve for just the power. So simply put, we have the power equals the heat transfer plus the mass flow rate times the change in enthalpy, just rearrangement from this formula up here. So now if we try to substitute our values in here to find our power, you'll find that you're missing a few things. So we do have that heat transfer it's given to us right over here as 2 kilowatts, but we don't have a mass flow rate, and we also don't have these enthalpies. So why don't I go ahead and find that mass flow rate right now, and we're going to use the ideal gas formula to do so. If I just rearrange PV equals MRT, I can have that M dot is equal to PV divided by RT. And I'm going to use the left side variables here just because we're given the volumetric flow rate at the inlet. We don't know it at the exit, so it's not possible to do this off of the exit. So I'm going to plug in the pressure, volumetric flow rate, gas constant, and temperature from the left side. So we have 1.05 bar, which is 105 kilopascals. You multiply it by 100. You definitely need to make sure you're in kilopascals. You cannot solve for the mass flow rate in bar. And then we're going to multiply it by that volumetric flow rate. So 12 meters cubed per minute. We need it in meters cubed for per second. So we're just going to divide it by 60, and you'll have 12 over 60 to convert from minutes to seconds. And then you're going to divide that by the gas constant. To find the gas constant, it's equal to the universal gas constant divided by the mass flow rate. In, in this case, for air, you have 8.3143 divided by 28.93. And you'll have that the gas constant comes out to being 0 0.287, and that's gonna be kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So we'll plug that into here, 0 0.287 times the temperature, it's already in Kelvin, so 300 Kelvin. So now this whole thing here simplifies into your mass flow rate, plug it into a calculator, and you'll have that your mass flow rate is equal to 0 0.2439 kilograms per second. So now we have that heat transfer and we have that mass flow rate, but we still need to find these enthalpies here. So it's pretty easy to find enthalpy of air if you're given the temperature. So if you have 300 Kelvin, you just turn to the uh, properties table A22 for air. So you go to 300 Kelvin, and you have that the enthalpy, or specific enthalpy, I should have been saying, is 300.19 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So I'll fill that in right over here. H1 is equal to 300.19 kilojoules per kilogram. Now at the exit, we have 400 Kelvin, so we'll turn back to that table, 822. You go to 400 Kelvin, and you have that the specific enthalpy is 400.98 kilojoules per kilogram. So I'll fill that in right over here on the right side. So now we pretty much have everything we need to find this power into the compressor. So we have that heat transfer, we have the mass flow rate, and we have our inlet and exit enthalpies. So let's go ahead and fill that into our equation here. So your net power is going to be equal to, or the input power is going to be equal to the heat transfer is going to be negative 2 kilowatts. And the reason for that is that it's releasing from the compressor. It's out of the system, so the sign convention 
If it leaves the compressor, it's a negative number. So you have negative 2 plus uh, the mass flow rate was 0 0.2439, and that is kilograms per second, times that specific enthalpy difference of 300.19 minus 400.98, so now if you just plug this into your calculator, you'll have that W dot or the input power is equal to negative 26.58 kilowatts. And it makes sense that this is negative because it just means that the compressor is consuming power or the power is coming in. And that is the case for compressor and pump devices.